Hey everybody, welcome back. I know it's been a while since I posted. Uh, I wanted to take you through the build process for this example behind me right here. This is a really fun uh, chart to build, a really fun visual, and it just uses standard Excel features in a kind of creative way. I think it's just a great way to illustrate all of these design features that people often just completely overlook in Excel and just never get taught about. We're definitely not focused on, uh, you know, actionable dashboards here today. We're really trying to have a little bit of fun and to show how to create some of these cool visual effects, whether you're in the intermediate. All right, so just starting off with a blank page here, I'm just gonna command A, change my background color to something a little bit darker here, I think, uh, around here. Great, yeah, I think that'll work. We're gonna head up to our insert tab up here, drop in a shape, I'm gonna use a circle. I'm gonna click and drag to drop those shapes and hold shift to make sure that it doesn't turn into an oval. That's what that's gonna do for you. So for our first one, I think I wanna do a bit of a gradient fill with a nice, cool gradient outline. We're gonna make this very colorful. We're going over the top here. So what I've got here is a path gradient. Path gradient's gonna help us have this go kind of inside out, right? And we're gonna have just like a slightly brighter purple color in the center and a more partially transparent uh, purple color at the outside, just so we get that nice gradient. That's just a very subtle glow. And then for the line, I've done a gradient line. This is, let me go zoom in over here, from a yellow to a pink to a purple to a blue. Now, the key to doing this when you add your colors in is to go to each of the colors and adjust the transparency one by one. That transparency is gonna help those colors just blend in a little bit better with the background. Now, to save myself a little time, I'm just gonna copy paste this, adjust the sizing, and go from there. It's just easier than dropping in new shapes each time. When you're working with shapes, copy paste can be a huge time saver. All right, so I just got another one kind of on the inside here, and I reduced the transparency on all these gradient colors along the outside here, just to make it a little brighter. And copy pasting again, I'm gonna do the same bright outline on this one, but with no fill, just so we have a nice circle on the outside. I'm just gonna go through this with a few more of them. Um, so on this one, I wanted a little extra glow, so I gave it a fill color that matches our background. That's a great trick. And then I gave it a glow. Now that's under this middle menu here. We sometimes forget this menu's here. Give it a nice big 150 point glow that's like mostly transparent. And what I'm gonna do then is right click that and send it to back. And it's just gonna create a nice little secondary glow in there. I might have to adjust the position and everything, but that looks pretty good. Now I did the same thing on another one, but I gave this one just a slightly brighter glow color. I might actually make it a little more transparent. It's a little too much right now, there we go. But I also did one other little trick here I wanna show you. See how this is when we zoom in, kind of dotted here, dashed? That's one of the line options under the selector menu over here. You see an option there where it says uh, dash type and dash type gives you the option to add some texture to it like this. I just like this. I think it makes it, you know, it, it can be a nice option when you're trying to get a little bit of, you know, visual interest in a, in a shape. Once you've got a few of these in here, it can be a little tricky to make sure everything's aligned perfectly. So I highly suggest learning how to use this find and select menu, going to the selection pane. It's gonna open up over here and using this when you're trying to get things organized. This is so useful. It allows you to select different layers, move them around, multi-select them, etc. So how I do this is I usually just select one of my layers. Doesn't matter which one, it gives me a sense of where everything is over here. And then I'll have a sense of where my other ones are. I'm gonna hold shift and multi-select a bunch of these. And then I'm gonna go to the shape format menu and use another very important feature, which is align objects. So we're gonna align center, if I've done everything properly, make sure that they're all perfectly aligned. Now, I know this seems like a small thing, but I am telling you, the easiest way to make your work look more professional is to take time to align everything properly, space things properly, make sure there's even padding around elements, make sure things are consistently sized. It seems like a small thing, but it actually makes a disproportionately big impact on how good your work looks. Now, I want one other thing in here. I want like a little more bright punchiness in the center. So I am gonna insert another shape here, another circle. And this one, we're gonna give like a very bright gradient, I think. So what I've done here is I've added in a gradient fill. This is from a yellow out to a orange, out to a red that's fully transparent. And you can see all those over here if you want some new and new gradient like this yourself. Again, transparency is the key here to make this look good. I like that. Now, we're being a little extra with this design. We're showing off lots of features. So just to jazz it up a little bit, uh, I'm gonna drop in some lines. These are just standard lines here. Uh, when you click and drag to drop a line in, you can hold shift and it'll keep it locked in one direction, like up and down or at 45 degrees. Really nifty when you're trying to get nice clean lines. 
So I'm going to do a few of these kind of like radiating out from the center. Um, let me just put them in and then we'll show you how to format them. Okay, so that looks about right. So I've just got one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. And this effect you see is doing two things. One, I've added in a begin arrow type and end arrow type, which are just circles. You have circles as an option for your arrow in these. And then I've made sure to make them the largest size. But really, it's the glow that I think is what people find cool about this. And that's again under this menu here glow effect. This is about 18 point width on the glow, bright yellow, and it's about 90 to 95 percent transparent. And that just creates that kind of subtle glow effect you see there. Uh, I don't know if subtle is the right word, but <laughs> that's what creates that effect. Um, next, I want to start blocking in some of the text here. Uh, we're going to the insert tab and dropping in a text box right here. Now, when you click and drag to drop these in, they're first going to have backgrounds and outlines and so I just you're going to remove all that if you haven't seen my videos before I'm always telling people to remove your outline remove your fill color just so you can only have the text itself and then once you get your text in there you just edit it by just selecting your text and using the same editing text area up here that you would use for everything else I'm just gonna make this text white but what I'm going to do now is um, just copy paste this a few times change all my fonts and then I'll I'll show you afterwards so you don't have to watch me go through the process of adding a bunch of text boxes <laughs> okay so we got some labels in here and this is going to be annual data so we want the months of the year and then I have added my titles and my metrics now here's the thing to keep in mind you can link your text boxes to your actual data so if you look up here in the corner pivot l2 it means it's just pointing to a cell so you just hit equals click your cell and it's going to link the cell into the text box whenever your cell updates your text box will update with that data i am not linking the um the dates here because we know this is always going to be annual data and i'll talk a little bit more about that as we add the chart in so i'm not going to do a deep dive on the charts right now because i actually have a separate video that goes through it but the basic premise is this i have two years worth of data here and it's showing in this case, sales data by the day of the year. And when I say day of the year, I mean one through 365. If it's not further far enough into the year, we just put a zero in there um, or just don't include the data at all. So one is, you know, 2022, one is 2023 in this case. And then I have built a table that references it and it does something really important, is important when we construct our chart. So we have 365 days worth of data and we wanna make it into this cool radial bar plot that you saw before. Now that radial bar plot is gonna be using our radar chart and that radar chart needs to be able to jump from each day of the year back to zero to create that ray effect. Because if we didn't do that, you would just have a kind of weird odd circle. <laughs> So to create the rays, it has to jump back to zero every other day. So essentially these are 0.5 will have zero, one will have the first day's value, 1.5 will have zero, two will have the second day's value. And we just go through alternating between our values and zero. So each of these has 365 times two entries in it for each of the years. And these are all cell references, so they update automatically. I don't have to manually do this every time. And that's important because rebuilding this would be a huge pain. So it's just doing an X lookup for the day of the year, taking this day of the year, looking it up in the table and then pulling the value in. And then we've just repeated that down. So when we select that data, we go to the insert tab, drop in a radar chart. I always forget where these are. It's gonna give you something a little something like this. It's a bit of a mess, but with a bit of styling, we can get it cleaned up. I'm just gonna give you the side by side here and give you a very quick version of this because this is a very specific chart type. I don't think anybody else really is gonna be needing to make. So I'm gonna drop out our background border over here. Always drop out your background border. Taking out these labels, they're not helpful in this case. And our legend and chart titles, all that jazz. Now, notice how this is all from the center here, but over here we have a big, nice blank space in the middle. So to do that, what we're doing is going into our axis labels. You can't see them here because the text color is dark, but it's right there. And then going into our axis label options and in our axis options, we are gonna be adjusting our minimum value. Now, you might have to play around with this for your data to get the hole in the center to be the right size. In our case, it's you know around a million. <laughs> so 
pretty pretty decent size there and that will give you that hole in the center and then afterwards you can delete all your stuff and if you need to mask out the center you can always just insert a circle over this that matches your background color to hide any labels or grid lines in there that you don't want to have in this version the only other thing we've done is given it a nice color for our series we've got our current and previous year series here and uh, i've just used a gradient line on these which looks great when you use the radial option that's what i did here and this is just from like an orange to a yellow and it creates that nice effect the other one's just a purple <laughs> no fancy anything on that one and that is our base chart now i wanted to add in a bunch of other charts in here and do a whole fancy space looking you know space station looking dashboard but uh, i'm not gonna have time but i do want to still show you how to do the visual effects so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to insert some icons in here and then style them so you see how the styling works and then you can apply that to charts or anything you want but i just want to show you how to do the cool neon effect here because everybody seems to like it i'm going to head up to the insert tab uh, and then under the insert tab, I'm gonna go to icons. That is gonna open up a menu over here where you can select icons and insert them. These just come built into Excel, perfectly fine ones. Okay, so now yours probably don't look like this when you drop them in, <laughs> and that's as it's supposed to be. So what I've done here is very, very simple, and I've done basically the same thing just across each different color. So the inner color, the fill color for your icon should be a slightly lighter version. In this case, like a lighter purple, lighter green, lighter yellow, not super light, but just a little lighter. Then go over, and give it a glow. And the glow should be a very bright version of that color, in this case, like a bright hot pink. And I'm gonna do it at about 60 point width here. It's gonna be different in your design. Just adjust the width as necessary. And I'm gonna make these about 60-ish percent transparent. And you can do that with any color. Lighter version on the inside, bright version for the glow, big and make it mostly transparent. And if you have a dark background, it's gonna give you this cool neon effect. Just to be extra, I added some little lines in between here using that dash effect we used before, gave it some placeholder text, whatever. But this is the basic premise. And you can apply this to anything. You can click into a series on a chart and you can adjust the chart to have a glow. You can do individual shapes and give them glows. Uh, if you're uh, inserting something into your dashboard and you just wanna have a section, you could just put a rounded rectangle with this kind of glow, right? So it's very, very flexible, but that's how I created that kind of cool effect that you see here behind me. And that's it. Um, look, obviously, you know, this isn't something I'm gonna show at a corporate board meeting, but looks really cool. I think it's a pretty decent way of illustrating lots of different visual design tools that are in here because a lot of people wouldn't even guess that this kind of thing was possible in Excel, but it absolutely is. And it doesn't use any custom coding. It doesn't use any fancy fandangled features that nobody knows about. This is core Excel feature sets that allow us to do this. And you can push it as far as you want. So what I tell people is just play around with all that stuff under the insert tab, shapes, pictures, icons, and then take some time when you're working with charts and shapes. Look at what you can customize in here, right? Try all these different fill options, color options, test out the gradients, test out glows and shadows, just see what you can do with it and apply it when and how it's appropriate and whatever you're doing in Excel. Anyway, that's all. Hope that was helpful, folks. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye for now. See ya.